start with you, if I may, Solomon. I mean, you have been involved in Icelandic politics and activism for so long. Now you're in Afghanistan uh, for the United Nations. I know, but it's in the first world that I want to ask you about um, whether you think crises like the economic one that you, we heard about here um, are needed in a way to reach this kind of um, realization the way that um, uh, Jön spoke about it you know as something within himself happening across society mm -hmm. uh, yes uh, thank you very much uh, I think uh, crisis although they can be very hurtful. Uh, they, they are not necessarily bad. You know, often they, they help us to, to realize um, that there are things that we need to change, both in the life of a nation and in our personal life. Uh, they can be a kind of catharsis, if you can say so. Uh, and I think, in many ways, um, this was something I experienced, you know, personally, uh, when we had this uh, financial meltdown here, or financial crisis in Iceland, in the end of uh, 2008, uh, because it was not only a, a financial crisis, a political crisis uh, in Iceland, it was also for me a personal crisis. Uh, and uh, it meant that the, I, I had myself, having been in, in politics for 30 years, I had to myself to really think about where uh, did it all start, uh, what was my aim, what was my objectives when I, when I started this journey in, in 1982 by creating, being one of the founding members of a women's party, and then in uh, 2008, uh, being a, a minister of foreign affairs in a government that was in, in power when we were hit by this financial crisis. So, so you know, I had to really uh, revisit uh, my, my roots and look at, you know, where did I come from? And uh, when I started, we were thinking about a, a new value system. We wanted to promote uh, new values. Uh, we, we said, you know, women have, to have a lot to offer. They, uh, uh, from uh, be, being, uh, uh, shall we say, life-giving, the life-giving elements that women nurture, being caretakers of, of people, we thought this was very much needed in politics. And we uh, denounced the idea of looking at our opponents as our enemies as politics is all about. You know, politics is always about uh, uh, defining who is your enemy. And we were talking about, you know, not doing that, but defining what it really was that we stood for. And, uh, and in a way, I can see, you know, the best party uh, being, uh, uh, you know, doing similar things. You know, not defining who is the enemy and how are we going to fight the enemy, but defining what it is that I stand for and how can I uh, uh, channel that into political uh, political system. So do you think there's a trend? Uh, I don't know if we should call it a trend, but there are seeds. There are seeds there that were, you know, uh, from, from 1982 uh, uh, when we started. And I think it's not a coincidence that the best party comes up now, although they, they have not. They are not saying it themselves. They are not referring to, to the women's party. They are not using that, I think, as an example. But I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence, because I think there was something there. There were seeds there that they could really, you know, use in a way. Thanks very much, Thorin. I want to ask um, Professor David Cadman, in your search for the good economy, when you listen to the stories that we had today, Andre spoke about it earlier, um, if the old ways are no longer valid, then what new ways could be adapted? Well, I found myself this morning, as it were, in a place of transition, hearing these astonishing stories of the courage and honesty of Iceland in confronting the problems which other people have faced, but dealing with them in an astonishing way. 
And then, of course, the humour, the vitality, the energy of the best party and, and what it has done. And I find myself asking the question, how is this sustained? Because there will be many people who will say, this can't be done. You can't do this. This isn't the way that things work. But there was a, there was an economist, oddly enough, in the early part of the 20th century called Schumpeter. And he had a notion of something called the gale of creative destruction. And what he said was that when great uh, economies grow and then become fat and then they explode and then they crash, this is a gale of creative destruction. The one thing you must not do is try and claw your way back to the way things were before. You have to somehow or other embrace creativity and innovation and humility and you have somehow to find your way towards the place that the economy is trying to take you to. And that's what I've called the good economy. And I believe it is quite... There, there are no absolute economies. Only different economies that arise from different values and principles. So you have a choice. What values and principles do you want to bring to your economy? And have you got the courage to insist that this should happen? Or will you just walk back into bondage of the old economy? It is just a matter of courage, though. I mean, I look at Iceland, it's so different from where I come from, from developing economies. I'm sure you've, you know, you've been around the world and seen all these different places. I mean, is it possible, can, can we can you put it into international perspective? Well, there's a huge vested interest in taking things back to the old economy, which we can all see is broken. Not only broken in terms of economics, but highly damaging in terms of the environment. So there are no old lessons to follow, because the old lessons will just take us back to the old economy. But it was interesting this morning hearing about the new industries that are emerging here in Iceland. Um, there are just small signs of, thing, of ways things can be done differently, more collaborative. Less concern about growth, more concern about sufficiency. Uh, more concern about how a local economy functions and how a global economy functions. And there aren't any easy, five easy steps forward, but they can be done, I'm sure of that, and I'm very impressed by what I've heard this morning, and I hadn't heard it before. Yeah. I mean, you've done your own bit of creative destruction there. I was a little scared myself when I heard you talk, kind of throw economic history out of the window just then. As you say, it takes a lot of courage. I wanted to ask Andre, um, do you think that the Icelandic people have got the courage to push on? Well, Iceland uh, is, in history, we have been very good at being poor. But we were not very good at being rich. Mm -hmm. And uh, all our culture, was about being poor. And uh, as soon as the crisis hit, uh, we would go d directly into kind of the traditions that uh, my parents and my grandparents were raised with. Mm -hmm. Women started knitting like, uh, like hell, and uh, people started taking blood sausages, and, uh, and because, you know, as soon as, you know, if I, if I look at pictures from my grandmother, the level of happiness, you know, the level of unhappiness is with one of my grandmothers that uh, was sent away from the family when she was eight to babysit in another town because they were so poor they couldn't have, have milk. But my other grandmother, they, they were at the level of being able to enjoy skiing, mountaineering, and so, so just around the 40s, 50s, we reached the level of, it's just in your own mind and your creativity to be happy. So 
we have to fall very far down to yeah. to reach that level. Iceland has Iceland catches about one percent or two percent of all the fish in the world. We have already installed five times more energy than we can consume ourselves. Uh, we uh, have what? I need some in the Philippines. You need some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and we have like uh, one percent of all the aluminum production in the world. We have more, we have more tourists per capita. So we don't actually have to grow, we just have to use the resources that we already have. So there are enough jobs here, but sometimes they're distorted, like he was talking about when the banks became a black hole for talent. Yeah. So somebody that would be doing good processing and getting good ideas for a fish factory of uh, efficiency and getting, making it more environmentally friendly, he would be doing risk management in a bank. So yeah. It's a very painful transition when this talent goes into other sectors in the economy. I, I just want to, before I ask um, the mayor a question, David was interested in one of the things that you were talking about, about the way that human people behaved. I think that is such an exciting idea. How do we learn to be poor? Because we've spent years trying to learn how to be richer, and we know it's been a disaster. And most of us need to reduce our level of consumption by about 30%. It's exactly like economic growth. It, it does not measure, for example, children's happiness. No. Yeah. We have an excellent survey here in Iceland, which is done, has been done for 20 years, yeah. where every single child in Iceland answers like 20 pages of, 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 of their life. It ties in with something that the professor was saying, which is who is working for the good economy? I remember we were talking about this earlier. Is this the people? Is it the bankers? Who is working? Who is sorry. working for the good economy? Hardly anyone. Yeah. Hardly anyone. Yeah. But, but the interesting thing is that yeah. the, the well-being of teenagers in Iceland yeah. has never been greater than this year. So they drink less, they spend more time with their parents, uh, they're less drug abuse, they're, there's less bullying. And it's, it's quite astonishing that all the figures are in the highest that they have ever been, despite of the economic turmoil for the last four years. Okay, time to put you and Gunnar um, on the spot a little bit, just a little bit. I was actually very interested in, in the part of your speech where you were talking about people in politics thinking very fast and being very intelligent. And um, I wanted to ask you actually what, why you like to think slow, because I think if I, I, you know, I'd like to hear whether you think it has something to do with the kind of, the, the moving from the, the process one goes through personally within and then bringing it out into the public sphere? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have raised the expectation so high uh, and when we have uh, uh, a, a, a person, a figure like a politician, we demand answers and we are quite uh, ruthless. Uh, towards these people, uh, uh, especially through media, uh, it's it's almost. I mean, when when politicians are being uh, 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 talked to on, for instance, on, on on television, it's 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 next step to interrogation. I mean, it's uh, it can get very violent and uh, people raising their voice and pointing their fingers and stuff like that, and it's very intimidating. Can I ask you something and be very intimidating? I hope not. <laughs> because for me, as a journalist, I hear you say that, and, and there was talk about, we are talking about how people wanted justice. Mm -hmm. how, how do you bring people to account uh, without being violent, as it were? Uh, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's necessary to find a, a different culture. We have to change this culture because this will only lead to very alpha type people daring to go into politics. So it's it's like it's like with garbage in a city. If you have a lot of garbage in the city and people will complain and the media will complain that the city is not taking care of the garbage. To, to clean you should hire more people to clean up the garbage. And if you do so, people will feel, oh, it's, a, it's okay to throw garbage on the street because there are so many people to clean it up. 
But uh, that's not the solution. You have to change the culture of people who are unwrapping food items <laughs> in what they do with the paper. You have to get them to put the paper in a bin instead of throwing it in the street. So reducing people who, uh, who uh, clean the streets <laughs> would be a better, and let the, let the garbage just fill the streets and the people uh, scream, what, what, who is going to do something about the garbage? You! <laughs> you do something about this garbage, because you put it there. So, I mean, uh, if, 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 if we keep this culture going, it will get more vicious. It will only get more vicious. More intelligent people, more uh, uh, determined people will be on both sides. And it will, lead, it will, it will escalate uh, into, uh, into uh, no good things. And, and identifying each other as enemies the way that Sovereign was talking. We should, we're about at the time actually when we're going into roundtable conversations, I think. Um, but before we do that, I know there's so much more to be said. I wonder if you guys would like to just you know, conclude, if you've got something to say to everyone as they go into this first round table session of the whole um, two days, we will actually be asking you to, to go through various techniques to, um, to uh, I don't know, develop some of the ideas that we've been talking about within yourselves and within the context that, in which you live and work, but, but this is the first time, so it's important. <laughs> Did you want to say anything, David, or should we just go yeah, around? I've just been inspired by listening this morning, and I think one of the things I'm going to think about is how can I take longer to think about doing less? Lovely. Yes. Uh, can I just uh, add uh, one thing to what has been said here? Because uh, what I have thought a lot about after the financial crisis is that you know before the financial crisis, not only Icelandic society but uh, the societies of the world were very occupied by greed, by hubris and greed, and that was what was controlling the actions of uh, people mainly. What I'm worried about is that the actions of people. We, I don't think we will go. I hope at least we will not go there again. You know because like, we have learned the lesson. But what I'm more worried about is that people will now be more controlled by anger and fear, which is, you know, us, can have us negative consequences for the societies, us, we, and people. And there are a lot of uh, people, uh, parties, politicians, that are uh, capitalizing on this, trying to use it for their cause, trying to activate people on the basis of fear and, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, animosity or uh, negative feelings. And that is what I'm most worried about now. Thank and you. that is also in Iceland. We should not be complacent in Iceland because there is a lot of violent, uh, and violence in the dialogue in Iceland. Mayor, did you want to chip in at this point? Anything that you want to say before they go into the round table conversations? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I wholeheartedly uh, uh, agree, agree with Ingrid Solo on this. Uh, and as I mentioned in my speech, uh, we ha have all the ingredients to make uh, something really bad here. And uh, 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 so uh, it's, it's a very serious uh, danger to our uh, the future of this society. Thank you. Yeah, kind of the basic thing that I wanted to bring into the discussion was <coughs> just these primal uh, facts like uh, the military industrial complex and how these machines and how the good normal person on the floor wants to continue very damaging action and how people stick to that because uh, possibly our educational system or our culture or something sticks us always in the only possible world of all worlds. So we try to keep that world going instead of enjoying the imagination of Schumpeter of seeing something just go and recreate something out of the you know. And, uh, you know, I wonder if if creative teams could just go to a village in Sweden that is addicted to making mines or something, 
and just help them out on it, you know, just sincerely, person to person, not from the top level, not from the, from the unions to the normal people working in the factory, just coming in there and helping them stop it. Right? I think that would be really interesting. Thank you very much indeed to all the panel.